Hello. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Heather Ricciuto, your host of Mind the Gap, a new series on cyberexchange.ca, where we focus on workable solutions to the cybersecurity skills gap and the talent shortage, not on the problem. Thank you again for joining us for episode two. March is Women's History Month, and what could be more fitting than for me to be joined today by Lynn Dome, Executive Director of Women in Cybersecurity, better known as WESIS. WESIS is a US-based nonprofit organization dedicated to the attraction, advancement, and retention of women in cybersecurity. And although it is a US-based organization, WESIS has significant global reach with industry affiliates and student chapters around the world including right here in Canada. In fact, the very first international affiliate was formed here in Ontario. That's our WESIS Ontario affiliate, and I am proud to be the vice president of that, of that affiliate. We were formed in 2019, and I hope after today we'll have some new members. So welcome, Lynn. I, I, I would like to explore today what, what WESIS is doing to mind the gap. But first, I wondered if you would like to introduce yourself and perhaps share a little bit about the history of WESIS to help our listeners understand, because some of them might have never heard of WESIS before. Sure, sure. I'd love to. Thank you for having me here today. It's so it's my pleasure to join uh, with you on Cyber Exchange. So this is fun. Um, my name is Lynn Dome, a Women in Cybersecurity Executive Director. Heather is right that we often go by the acronym WECYS, W-I-C-Y-S, and we pronounce it we sis, like we sisters, because that's exactly what we are. We are a cyber sisterhood. And we're a 501c3. We started back in 2018 as a nonprofit, but originally, WESIS was originally launched in 2014 as a conference. So Dr. Amberine Siraj at Tennessee Tech University, she reached out to National Science Foundation to receive some seed funding for the first ever Women in Cybersecurity Conference. So it's hard for us to believe that prior to 2014, there really was an initiative, like an inclusion and diversity effort initiative like this of its kind. But yet we've always been in the cybersecurity workforce shortage. So Dr. Siraj was a trailblazing woman that she continues to be. And she wanted to make that difference and do, drive the change that's needed in the workforce. And so now here we are many years later, and our mission is to recruit, retain, and advance women in cybersecurity. And we do so by creating opportunities. Thanks, Lynn. And, you know, it, obviously, I've, I've witnessed, I shouldn't say obviously, because maybe, uh, you know, I don't think I said that I've been involved with WESA since 2016. I went to my very first conference in 2016. So um, I think that was conference number three. And I've been to everyone since except for uh, 2021 in, in Denver. And since the formation of the 501c3 though the growth has just you know i've witnessed i've witnessed how how phenomenal the growth has has been i mentioned that the very first international affiliate was here in ontario canada but there are how many now around around the world lynn like it seems like every week there's a new one yeah, there is. We are definitely a global growing organization. So now we have 43 professional affiliates. WESIS Ontario was our first international affiliate just in 2019. And now we have affiliates in Africa, Australia, France, India, Pakistan, the UK, and all throughout the United States. And on top of that, we have over 150 student chapters in Canada, Costa Rica, India, Nigeria, and throughout the United States as well. So the momentum continues to go strong and we have over 5,400 members with representation in over 70 countries. So the growth is big, the community, the global community, the sisterhood of the WESIS organization is just like a thriving entity uh, in and of itself. And, and I'm sure our listeners can hear in our voices how passionate we are about it because it is such a, such a great organization. So, with the, the growth that we've been talking about, not, no, not, not only has the membership grown, the programs offered by WESIS have, have grown exponentially, I think. Um, and so can we talk a little bit about some of the initiatives that WESIS has undertaken in, in just the past couple of years to focus on helping women 
either you know uh, reskill or upskill in cybersecurity or advance their careers. Things like your mentoring program, I should say our mentoring program, programming for veterans, the formation of some uh, what I'll refer to as special interest groups, such as the one for um, neurodiverse, neuro, neurodivergent people, and and so on. I mean, the list is is quite lengthy. Can you talk about some of those, and particularly ones that Canadians can take advantage of if they're members of WESIS? Sure, sure. So first, I'd like to just step back a little bit. And WESIS is an organization, we have over 5,400 members, and it's comprised of women, men, allies, and advocates that have a strong mission and passion to fulfill the capacity in the cybersecurity workforce. And so we have a strong mission and passion to recruit, retain, and advance women in cybersecurity. So all our members are passionate about the recruitment and retention of women in cybersecurity. And so everything that we do is building this community. We're a woman in cybersecurity overarching community, but all our different initiatives and opportunities are other community building areas. So everything we do is about cultivating that community of inclusion, of equity, of allyship, and then collectively, how do we upskill and up level ourselves, but not only ourselves, collectively rise as women in cybersecurity. We often say together we thrive. And as one woman is rising, she's reaching her hand out and bringing another woman with her. And so we're really proud of our community and all the initiatives that we have. They kind of level one another up collectively. So we have many different uh, special interest groups. Since we're a member-based organization, we have an online member form. Our special interest groups are formed in the member form, such as neurodiversity in cybersecurity. That's that's a fabulous one. We have Latinas in cybersecurity, cybersecurity law, data privacy. So any different area that you really want to focus your attention on in cybersecurity, you can either start your own special interest group or join an interest group and continue that conversation with your community there. We also have our affiliate program, which is another way of, you know, kind of growing your community and your network and our student chapters. But on top of that, we have our skill development training programs. And that really came about during the pandemic. Uh, In 2020, when we decided to cancel the conference, that was a really tough decision to make. It was one week before the day of the conference starting. And so after that, within five weeks, we went to this virtual conference experience and it was great. And we knew that our community needed to be together now more than ever. But on top of that, we needed more programming in order to grow this space and utilize this time as, okay, we're in the pandemic, we can't have in-person events, but how can we continue to grow and showcase our talents and gain new experiences, add to our LinkedIn profiles or resumes, be able to speak to these in interviews, negotiate ourselves for, you know, different leadership capacities. So that's how the training programs came into existence. And it's been a thriving success. And the first one was launched by Google. It was the skill development training program. And we partnered then with SANS Institute. And that was opened up internationally. And 15 final recipients were selected in that program to receive advanced certifications. And all 15 of them were um, employed in cybersecurity careers within less than a year of starting the program. So it's super intense, it's jam-packed, and it, 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 it proves results, it has major results. And so the following year, we were able to scale that program and um, have Meta and Bloomberg join forces, forces with Google. We opened it up, we had 900 enroll again, and it was a tiered program. And then finally it boiled down to the, the, the final tier, which is the final 40 scholarship recipients that now re- are in the process of receiving their advanced certifications. So that's how our training program started and they're opened up internationally. Target is gonna be launching one next week, the Cyber Defense Challenge. So that's really exciting. That's open uh, globally as well. And AWS builds out a roadmap for us. SANS Institute builds out a roadmap. All lots and lots of opportunities there. We have newsletters, webinars. We have a job board plus plus where all our strategic partners recruit from. Leadership summits, leadership series. 
our mentor mentee program, as you mentioned, we all just absolutely loved where we designed a curriculum to upskill and up level women, no matter where they're at in their career, preparing them for their next level of advancement. And that is a global mentoring program. Right now we have 745 mentees and 191 mentors in that program. We have all this and so much more. So we're all about building these little areas of communities and bridging the gap for women to, uh, to not only get recruited in, but also be retained and then be able to advance in their careers because of it. Oh, you're muted. So you've shared a lot of information, uh, Lynn. And I, I imagine that many of our listeners are wondering where they can find all of this information and how they can take advantage of it. So let me say, first of all, if you're new to WESIS, you've just heard of it today, go visit www.wicys.org. It's also going to be posted on Cyber Exchange so that you can go check it out. Don't go there now though, because we want you to keep listening to us. Um, but Lynn, can you talk a little bit about how people can become members of WESIS in order to take full advantage of all those initiatives we just talked about? Yes, yes. So it, it is, we are a member-based organization. So if you haven't heard of us before and you want to just learn more and explore different opportunities, go to our website, like Heather mentioned, and hit the subscribe form and subscribe to our newsletter. We roll out training programs and opportunities, many different initiatives, just continuously. So the best way to never miss a beat about the WESIS organization is subscribing to the newsletter. Then if you want to join us as a member, we have uh, faculty fees, we have a, a, a student or a veteran initiative or active duty um, or a professional membership. So all of that is under the join button. So please join. And once you join the WESIS organization, you get right into that member portal. And just like we say, navigating through your cybersecurity career, because we're all forever learners being in cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is always evolving, just like we're always evolving and, and learning as we're going. We want you to jump right in and navigate through the WESIS membership portal. Join special interest groups. Go to our website under initiative and go to Canada and join. We have Western Canada. We have WESIS Ontario. Join those affiliates. If you're a student and you're listening to this, check out and see if there's a student chapter at your university. And if not, start one because we give out scholarships. What's really unique about our conference too is that for every single regular registrant, we issue out a female cybersecurity student scholarship. So we are the only conference, regardless of gender, that ensures equal representation of students and professionals. So what I recommend to anyone listening here that's new to the WESIS organization is just dive right in and navigate yourself through the WESIS ecosystem. And when there's an opportunity, like for example, the target, target cyber defense competition um, and challenge that's coming up, dive right in and explore the possibilities that lie ahead. Thanks, Lynn. We, we actually had a question of, um, from the audience about certifications and how, how do you guide new entrants into cy the cyberspace with navigating certifications? And you know that, that's a tough one because there are so many certifications out there, but when it comes to leases, I would say, you know, if you, if you would, would be interested in joining WESIS, then, then you can explore what WESIS has to offer through partnerships with organizations like the SANS Institute and, and others that Lynn has mentioned today. And I think you kind of have to figure out what is right for you in, in the way of certifications. Right. Would you, would you agree, Lynn? Oh, yes, yes. And all our partners, I mean, we have many different strategic partners, and all our partners put together different training programs from we continually work with them on what makes sense. Um, and then we just launch a new program because of it. So everything is always evolving and changing with us as well. So just, you know, keep your thumb on the pulse of what's going on with WESIS. And when something opening opens up, it's always free to all WESIS members. So just dive in, enroll, register, fill out the application. If it's for a scholarship, for a different type of certification, fill out the essay, be thorough, be thoughtful, take your time, put your attention on it, and know that great opportunities come from it. Absolutely, absolutely. 
And, you know, Wises, you, you've talked about the culture within Wises of cultivating community. And that's exactly what Wises is. It's, it's a community. And you talked a bit about us all helping each other, Lynn. And if nothing else, it, that you can, you can take advantage of that by joining by joining WESIS, building your network, making new friends. I remember the very first WESIS conference that I that I went to, I mentioned in, in 2016. I remember the very first morning walking into the room, the, the, you know, the main conference room for the opening keynote and or, or conference kickoff and just the feeling walking into that room and seeing the room filled with 90% women uh, was just phenomenal. And I know I'm not alone in the, the feeling that you get just being a part of WESIS. And I'm so happy that this month uh, you're able to hold the conference in person. So it, it is, as I mentioned, Women's History Month and the annual WESIS conference is coming up in a couple of weeks. As always, it is sold out, Lynn, which is so exciting. <laughs> and so... Um, Maybe can you talk a little bit about what the, the conference has to has to offer and um, hopefully get some of our listeners interested in attending 2023. Yes. And of course, we don't know where that location will be yet because that will be announced at, at Louisa's 2022, right? That is right. And I'm glad that you did it. Try to get me to share that location. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. I Most wouldn't people dare. are very sneaky like that. We couldn't do that during a live session here. That would be horrible. So, um, yeah, so everyone will have to wait to the 22 conference to hear where the 2023 location is. So the conference is amazing. I mean, we started as a conference back in 2014, and it was to bring women together that are in cybersecurity and leveling up women, other women along the way. We're a technical conference and, um, and it's activity that is just nonstop. When Heather was just uh, talking about it, it, it gives me like such great joy. Like, I can't believe that here we are again in two weeks, we're all going to be together. It's one of the experiences where the energy, the vibe, the enthusiasm is just different. And it, we're all there as this incredible learning and networking opportunity, but it's a place when after you leave the conference, you leave fulfilled, like feeling rewarded and empowered and not depleted. I know some of us have all gone to many different conferences and it's, you know, there's so much networking, there's so much going on that afterwards you're like, okay, it's, you need to go home and you need to get some rest. But really leaving WESIS, you're energized, you're empowered, you have an incredible amount of knowledge and skill set, but you grew your network, you have this strength of this community behind you, and you just feel like you're in this stronger place because of it. My first conference was in 2018 here in Chicago, Heather, with that bone chilling weather. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. It took your breath away. It took mine too, but this is where I'm from is the Chicago land area. So it was my first conference and everything, my career advancement all stemmed from going to my first conference and being there with my network. It was a place where I belonged. It was a place where people believed in me before I even believed in myself in some areas. And to have that community, you cannot put the price tag on the power of a community of like-minded individuals with shared experiences going through the same type of um, experiences and that's advancing in their careers because of it. So it's incredible. It is. And, you know, I'll just add that at the conference, uh, I really believe there's something for everyone. You know, as you mentioned, half of 50% of the attendees are students. So obviously there's a lot of content for students, things like poster competition, the career village, a career fair. So at the, at the career village, you have the opportunity to have your resume reviewed, have a career chat with someone, mm -hmm. even do a, engage in a mock mock interview but then there are all the as far as the the main content of the conference goes there are technical presentations there are panel discussions lightning talks so plenty for for professionals who are also in attendance mm -hmm. and then for professionals who are in attendance there's also an opportunity to give back to the community by actually you know for example volunteering in the in the career village right or being a speaker at the at the conference so some like i said something for everyone 
Lynn, we have a question from the audience. Someone is asking if we can talk a little bit about the uh, global affiliates and student chapters. So what's in it for people to join, for people to join either a student chapter or a, an affiliate? So when it comes to the student chapter and the affiliate program, see, we assist the global organization. We're all about bringing a community of women in cybersecurity together. But the student chapters and the professional affiliates are so unique is because they're bringing a community together in that location or that region. And that's what makes it so you, you have this big global organization, you find all the different areas, you're part of the mentor mentee program. So you're in your mentoring cohort, you're in a skill development training program. So you're in a cohort with Google, Bloomberg and Meta, and you're working on developing your new skills. But then when you look locally, where's your local community? A lot of times women get lost in their professions because they don't have that local community there. And so it's a way to connect, to collaborate, to grow and to become a part of uh, this momentum for all of us going strong on a local and regional level. So the student chapters not only recruit into the cybersecurity programs on the campus, but also there it's a retention piece uh, to be able to for for women on the campus to be able to go together and have those shared experiences about cybersecurity and what they're studying, and to be able to work together on different challenges. Um, and different CTFs that they're working on and different uh, speakers that you're, they're bringing in and championing one another is really a strong retention piece on that. And then as, as all those women in the student chapters go on into their careers, that network just continues to grow bigger and bigger and broader and broader. And the same thing with the professional affiliate program. The professional affiliate program is all around the globe. And it's professional women like you, Heather, that are in your cybersecurity careers that volunteer your time and attention to the mission of the WESIS organization and are vice president of WESIS Ontario because of it. And it's growing that community in that collective space. So it, they, and there's different activities, different events, career villages, Mac interviews, different levels of support that each professional affiliate has based on those leaders that are in place there. So it's just really offering another diverse aspect of it and being a part of something even bigger. And I'll add that, you know, to, to be a part of a student chapter or an affiliate, you do not have to be a paid member of WESIS Global. Of course, we hope that everyone becomes a paid member so they can take full advantage of all the initiatives we've talked about here today that WESIS Global has to offer. But if you're unsure and you just want to learn a little bit more about what WESIS is all about, you might explore if, whether or not there's an affiliate or a student chapter in your area that you want to join and get to know some of the women there and learn a little bit more about WESIS. So I can talk for a moment of, uh, about WESIS Ontario. Of course, for the first couple of, or sorry, first couple, the past couple of years, everything we've done has had to be virtual. So it, that's been a bit of a challenge because as you said, Lynn, we only formed in 2019 and we barely got a chance to have any in-person events. We're hoping very soon to get back to in-person events, but I can share with you that, for example, um, on Tuesday, International Women's Day, we are piloting a virtual career village. So I talked a little bit about the career village that is held at, in person at the annual conference. We're piloting a virtual version of, of that on Tuesday. And I believe registration is still open. I will double check uh, after we close this, this session today. And if web registration is still open, I will make sure that the registration is posted on cyberexchange.ca so that some of our lis listeners might be able to join. But you'll have the opportunity to have your resume reviewed virtually. Um, but I mean, by going, joining us virtually on Tuesday evening, if you would like to. It's really exciting. I love that you're able to offer that to your community. Yeah, I, I'm really, you know, I hope it goes well. And if it does, <laughs> we will do it again. Um, we had a question also. So one of our listeners, Ali, said, thank you for everything that we, you and I are doing. So thank you, Ali, for, for recognizing that. And Ali has asked, do we do anything with K-12 in the K-12 space? 
we have a K-12 special interest group within the WESIS organization. And we also have some um, student chapters that are forming in high schools. And so they do a lot of different programs themselves in their uh, different areas. And so that's very exciting. So there is a strong community in the K-12 that are doing many great things. And for us in the organization, we offer a lot of pay it forward opportunities for us to be what others can see. And that's the female cybersecurity professionals that we are. And so overcoming a lot of the challenges for women in cybersecurity is that really having a role model and speaking to the good work that we're all doing and sharing that and showcasing our talent and our skills. So we're continually to put ourselves out there and really make ourselves visible and be the voice of women in cybersecurity. But when it boils down to K-12 initiative, the special interest group has some really great programs that they're running. And um, we just continue to educate and bring more women to get recruited into cybersecurity and to continue their education or go through the certification route because of it. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, Lynn. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Having a little bit of a challenge here with earbuds, but I think we're still good. Yeah, you're good. I could hear you fine. All right. Okay. Let me see if we have any other questions. For, I think we've covered all of the questions from our listeners. Actually, we have a kind of a unique one. <laughs> have shows like this helped you in your own career? So I'll, I'll say personally, I, I don't do this to help myself. I do this to help you, our listeners, to share information. And this is you know, one of the ways that I'm trying to give back to the community and and help lift others up, as Lynn talked about earlier. How about you, Lynn? These shows have really helped me in my career just for what we do, because we're all about building programs that are bridging that gap. And if I'm not part of the community and having these engaging conversations with Heather and listening to the questions that are coming in and the concerns that are coming in, that the listening skills that I have is to pay attention to what are the needs within the community and then work with our strategic partners about building programs that fill that gap there. Um, an example of this is our student chapter presidents. I meet with them once a month, just like our affiliate leadership. We meet once a month as well. And our student chapter presidents about six months ago came to us sharing that they feel going from internship application portal to internship application portal. They feel a little burnt out, discouraged a little let down. Sometimes they hear from employers back that they've received their application. Most times they didn't hear anything back. So it was this overall burnout experience that they were having. And it was frustrating to them. Well, it's been years and years and years, more years than I'd like to admit on this show since I've applied for an internship. And certainly it was vastly different when I applied. And so I didn't know about this application burnout experience from the interns and our student chapter president sharing it with me. So I took this information, I listened during the, the student chapter president meeting and I took the information, I brought it to the strategic partners and I said, this is what I'm hearing from our community. And is this a real thing? Like, what are we doing here? And they're thinking about, and they're like, yeah, you know what? That is, that's the experience that we're, they're having there. And so how could we build a direct pipeline we all agreed that we just needed to build a direct pipeline from our student members to internship opportunities from our strategic partners. And so from that conversation, five months later came the WESIS internship program, and it was a great success. We just piloted it with some of our employer partners. We had over 290, I think it was 293 applications received. We layered on top of it a cyber security aptitude assessment so that everyone's walking away with something. And that's really the gap that 
people, you know, we, you don't want to feel deflated on your journey. You want to feel empowered and supported. And so WESIS wasn't only providing the internship, the possible internship at the end of it, you know, not all internships are guaranteed, but the possibility of building that pipeline right there and having an internship from this program, that's the ultimate goal. But if that internship isn't received, what else are you walking away from? And you're walking away being heard, being recognized and getting a cyber gen IQ aptitude assessment. And we're educating on you on that assessment. Now that you have that, what do you do next because of it? So you're walking away with something and, and that something is always going to continue to level you up. You know, it's always a stepping stone, right? Other like everything that we do, every experience as prepares us for the next. And so that's what we worked on with the internship program. But I wouldn't, if I was a part of these type of um, conversations that I, I, I wouldn't have uh, heard what, what caps are out there. So this is definitely beneficial to all involved. So in other words, you're not just sharing information, you're listening, you're listening, and listening for new opportunities for new initiatives that WESIS can offer. That's right. And that's, that what, that's part of what makes you so good at what you do, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I, that actually leads me, you know, there is a final question I want to ask you, but um, I have one more before that. And that is around International Women's Day. Tuesday is International Women's Day. Is WESIS doing anything special on that day? Yes. Well, we're supporting our community and uh, raising awareness against bias. So we are supporting International Women's Day with Break the Bias, which uh, is the cross your arms in solidarity and taking a photo. So anyone listening, if you want to join the initiative, you could go to International Women's Day. They have a website, but they also have uh, the break the bias, the hashtag break the bias, and you cross your arms like this and take a selfie of yourself and post it on Twitter and Instagram and get yourself out there on social media that you're standing in solidarity with women to break the bias. And so what we're doing as a community is if you post a photo of yourself like this on social media and you use the hashtag WeSIS or you tag WeSIS with that, we're going to make a, a big photo ourselves of all the women in cybersecurity that we have within our community and to be able to push that out there and really have that global impact. Because we're all in this together and we're, this is an international uh, contribution that we all have to make. And so every little bit helps and joining in solidarity for that mission of breaking the bias is really crucial and beneficial, not only for us, but for the women that we stand next to. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. My final question to you before we wrap up is this. The cybersecurity talent shortage is daunting and it is a never ending challenge. Mm -hmm. So what motivates you and the rest of the WESIS leadership team to continue beating the drum, to continue doing what you do to, to help others in the cybersecurity industry? That's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> and really it boils down to is there's still so much work that needs to be done. There's still so many gaps that need to be filled, but we've moved the needle ever so slightly. Not only us, many organizations and people and initiatives and companies and organizations, they're all putting their time and their attention on it. And it really does take paying attention and making a difference. So initially in 2014, when we started as a conference, there was 11% women in cybersecurity. Now there's roughly 20 to 24% women in cybersecurity. So the needle has shifted but there's so much more work to do. And so that's what keeps the momentum going strong is that there's nothing but opportunities for women to have in their cybersecurity careers, to be fulfilled, to have rewarding career experiences and, and live passionately in a place that they belong. And so that's why WESIS puts together the programs that we do is to collectively gather everyone together, women, men, allies, and advocates, that all care about the cybersecurity workforce. They care about the cybersecurity of themselves, of their families, of the companies that they work for, the organizations that they care about. They care about building up the pipeline of retaining the talent that they have. And they know that we're also at a critical workforce shortage and that diversity of thought is absolutely 
critical for their cybersecurity teams to be able to solve those challenges that have never previously existed. They need to have all genders, races, ethnicities, identities, experiences, backgrounds, cultures, you name it. We need all hands on deck and all everyone at the table because the adversaries are certainly looking at the underrepresented populations. And so therefore our cybersecurity, the more diverse of a cybersecurity team, the more effective of a cybersecurity team. And so, you know, long and short of it, Heather, there's still so much work to be done. The critical workforce shortage is there, not solved. And we're here as a piece of the puzzle to be able to make a difference in not only your people's lives that are listening, that are in cybersecurity, but also into the security of um, the companies and organizations that we care about. Thank you, Lynn. It has been, as always, a huge pleasure speaking with you today. Our time is up already. It's gone by so quickly. I want to thank you again for everything that you do, for joining me today, for always being supportive. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. So thanks again, Lynn. And thank you to our listeners for, for listening in today. We hope that if you are not a member of WESIS or a WESIS affiliate or student chapter, that you will check us out and you will join us in some capacity, whatever is right for you. And I also hope that you will join me next month when I will speak with Madi Raza. Madi is the founder of CyberX and of Canadian Women in Cyber. We will talk a little bit about what he is doing to mind the gap. And in particular, why he started the annual Canadian Women in Cybersecurity Conference, which is coming up again in May. Hope to see you there. And with any luck, Lynn, I hope you will be able to join us as well. I am so looking Thanks, forward. Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Signing off. See you for episode three of Mind the Gap in April. <laughs>